Does a cold shoulder have anything to do with cold meat served to an unwanted guest? What does this idiom mean? What is jiggery pokery? Which author added the second highest number of words and phrases to the English language? All this and more coming up, but first, do subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you. If you look at someone over your shoulder with aloofness or disdain, you are giving that person the cold shoulder. Of course, you don't have to literally give that look. If you ignore or snub a person, act unfriendly towards them, then that counts as giving them the cold shoulder. Here's how we could use the phrase. Tell me to go and I'll go, but please don't give me the cold shoulder. When he bumped into his ex at the restaurant, she gave him the cold shoulder. After her classmates found out that she had complained to the teacher about them, they gave her the cold shoulder. According to folk etymology, the phrase originated in the practice of giving an unwelcome guest at a medieval castle a cold piece of meat from the shoulder of a sheep or other animal. This was in contrast to guests who were welcomed with hot preparations of prime cuts of meat. This explanation is quite entertaining, isn't it? But as I mentioned, it is folk etymology. Basically a made up story to explain the origin of a word or phrase. The introduction of this idiom is attributed by experts to Sir Walter Scott. Scott used it in The Antiquary, a book he wrote in the Scottish dialect and published in 1816. The Countess's dislike did not go farther at first than just showing her the called shoda. Scott used the word shoda elsewhere as well. From these multiple references, it becomes clear that shoda meant shoulder in the dialect he used. For example, they were stout hearts, the race of Glen Allen. They stood shoulder to shoulder, and called is known to be the equivalent of cold in that dialect. In St. Ronan's Well, Scott's novel of 1824, Cold Shoulder is written the way we write it today. I must tip him the cold shoulder or he will be pestering me eternally. An important thing to note is that there is no reference anywhere to the shoulder being eaten. It clearly points to the human shoulder, whether literally or idiomatically, a cold shoulder that is tipped or shown. Here are some points that support the theory that Walter Scott's works are the origin of the idiom in English. First of all, of course, his books contain the first recorded use of the phrase. Secondly, he takes the trouble to define its meaning in the glossary of his book. This suggests that it was an old Scottish proverb that he was introducing to English readers. Finally, within a few years of appearing in his books, the idiom became widespread in its use finding place in the novels of Charles Dickens, Anthony Trollope and John Goldsworthy, among others. The phrase soon travelled to America as evinced by this letter to the editor in the New England newspaper The Bangor Daily Whig and Courier, 1939. Eminent individuals and his cabinet advisers turned the cold shoulder to their ambassador for his independent act upon this occasion. It is important to note here that Scott was a hugely popular writer in his day. So his inclusion of an idiom in a couple of his books would have been enough to establish it in the language. In fact, Scott brought many new words and phrases into the English language. He was second only to Shakespeare in this regard. Jiggery pokery is another expression that Scott gave to English. It refers to underhand dealings and means trickery. In Scottish, there was the word juk which meant to duck out of the way of a blow. In the 16th century, juk gave rise to jukery, meaning trickery. The word porky, meaning artful or roguish, appeared in the 17th century. Jukery and porky were put together to form the phrase that was the precursor to jiggery pokery. Its first citation is in George Stewart's a joco-serious discourse in two dialogues between a Northumberland gentleman and his tenant, a Scotchman, 1686. Del fecht was it but jukri pokri, meaning devil fight, it was trickery. Sir Walter Scott picked up this Scottish phrase and put it in his 1817 novel The Black Dwarf. There has been some jukri pokery of satans in all this. When the expression started being used in England, it took on its current spelling. 
As we can see in long ago a journal of popular antiquities January 1873 in common use amongst the lower orders to give the idea of something not quite straightforward. For example, a stableman giving it as his opinion when the favorite lost a race that there has been some jokery pakery in the stable. The words have rather an eastern sound. Sometimes I've heard it pronounced jiggery pokery, but that sounds more corrupt. If by Eastern the writer meant Indian, I have to concur because jiggery pokery has always sounded like an Anglo-Indian expression to me. And note that what the writer calls the more corrupt version is what has become the standard version today. Here's how we can use the phrase. He was sacked for his financial jiggery pokery. It's surprising that he got away with his jiggery pokery for so long. The policeman was upset that his name got tarnished by the jiggery pokery of his junior. Jiggery pokery is one of the oldest reduplicative phrases in English. A reduplicative can be created by repeating the same word, such as goody goody, or by adding a word that sounds similar, such as super duper. Without dilly dallying any further, let me ask you to share your thoughts on the two phrases from Sir Walter Scott in the comments section. If you can think of any sentences containing them, please write them down too. Do subscribe to The English Nut. Click on the bell icon too, so you're the first to know when I post any new content. Now don't give me the cold shoulder. And don't do any jiggery pokery. I'm The English Nut. Bye for now.